Some people wanted a little bit more clarity on it. I talked about a day when volatility hits, a day when everyone on TV is talking about 5% correction, 10% correction, 15% correction. You know, some days like yesterday do start a new active sequence to the downside, or some days it creates a huge opportunity to embrace the volatility and to buy with a calculated plan. So I like to use the first part of the day as a barometer on what could happen for the rest of the morning or the day. How do I do that? I look at the S&P. Why do I look, look at the S&P? Because that's the backbone of the market. I look to see where we get a pivot low to trade against, whether it's five minutes, 15, 30, 90. Typically, you know, more time needs to go by before you get more confidence that that's the actual low of the morning. And then if you happen to see sectors, trade with relative strength versus the SPY load, then it gives you conviction to put on more risk and make more money. So if you look above at the chart of the SPYs, because that's what a lot of us trade, you take a look. So yesterday you had a big gap down, huge gap down. It was down five, six points. So right away you had your opening print and it broke below. So I know for me, I was waiting for market discovery. So what happened here? The, the, the low, right? The low here was at 1020. 1020 was the low of the morning. Okay. Sometimes people say, you know, I'm going to buy versus that, or I'm going to wait a little bit more for a signal that that could be potentially the bottom. So it was hard to tell whether this was going to be the low because at first you had a, a five minute low that got taken out. So maybe, you, you know, that didn't work and you just got stopped out for a little bit. Then you had a, a 15 minute low that got taken out with this 1020 final low. Then right here is where I would have said, okay, we have about 90 minutes that went by. We're starting to see some relative strength in tech and the small caps. So maybe a bounce could develop to play with a calculated plan. So what I just did before is these are the lines that I drew to help me navigate it. So this is your low, this is your higher low. So if you use my tier system, okay, this could have been tier one, tier two, tier three, when it got above the opening 60 minute range or 90 minute range, or it could have been, okay, let me just buy tier one. I don't want to overtrade it and put my stop in, etc. Okay, that could have been a really nice move to fill a part of the gap. What could have given you some conviction uh, was to see relative strength. How do you see relative strength? You, you look at, time frames like i just said in the morning so right here okay was the low of the s p at 10 20. so now you go to the queues right you go to the queues and say what is tech doing so the queues made their low oh my goodness look right here at 9 50. that was your low in the queues so when the spies made their lows at 10 20 that was right here okay so at 10 20 did the queues make a lower low on the morning no so what does that mean? It's showing relative strength. If the cues are showing relative strength and tech, are, if buyers are coming to tech, that tells you we might not have a trend down day. It could be an opportunity to buy some names to go from red to green. So let's see the lines I drew in here. Okay, so here is your low. First of all, if you if you tried it versus the opening range, you got stopped out. Not a big deal. So if you got stopped out of the cues, all right, you lost a little bit of money from here to there. But now you have that. Then the next thing that happened in the morning that could have been like, oh, wow, look at this, is at 1020 when the, the actual spies made new lows. Okay, the queues did not, right? 1020, the queues are hanging out here. You go back to the spies at 1020, the queue just made it, the, the spies just made a new low in the morning. So right there, that had to give you a little bit of an aha, like, wow, you know, tech is strong. At least let me buy some tech names. And then you could have thought to yourself, hey, the small caps failed at the top end of the range. They've been down for three days. Maybe if the small caps show some relative strength as pressure off the market. So you go back to the IWM and you see when did it make it slow? Ooh, look at that. The IWM made it slow at the 15 minute low. So as you could see in the first 90 minutes, these things are all making lows at different times and that's how you can gauge the relative strength. So right here, this made it slow at 9.45. You could have said, hey, I don't really trust it yet. But then right here at 10.20, which was when the spies made their low, you can be like, wow, the, the IWM isn't even near the lows and the Q, uh, spies just made a new low. I, I could buy the small caps. Plus, if the small caps aren't being pressured, what does that mean? The market can come back. It's not that weak. And tech did the same thing. So then all of a sudden, you know, you could have been uh, along the IWM here versus there. And then, all, and then it wound up making a move to fill the gap. And now the IWMs are at 225. So you could have been long literally from 219 with the stop at, at 218. Maybe you're, you're risking the point for a trade that went for you know, $5. So you're risking one, one and a half dollars to make four, four and a half dollars, depending on how long you want to take it. But the moral of the story is 
When you have price discovery, when volatility hits, you need to know what you're looking for. Sometimes a low could happen in 15 minutes, sometimes 60, sometimes 90. To me, you know, it's it's more credible when it happens within like after 60 minutes because you've seen more action versus just reacting. And there's money to be made. I listen, I I, I react in the first few minutes of the day and, and sometimes it hurts, but literally I put more money to work after the 30 to 60 minutes after I get confirmation. And again, if you look here at the spies, just to reiterate one more times, this the spy made its low at 1020. If you look right there, and the Qs made a higher low at 1020, and so did the IWM made a higher low at 1020. So right there, your tactics and your process could have said, hey, <laughs> we're not going to be in a trend down day. You could put some money to work if you didn't have as much money on because of the faulty action from the week prior. And I had a great day yesterday and had some follow through today. And that's how you let the market tell you what's next versus listening to the opinions and listening to all the people out there because you don't want to listen to them. You want to listen to the market. Have a great weekend. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you learned something.